at some point we are going to have to do a whole show about how good this show sounds. say this our theme song for the show is model rocket scientist big small towns check them out you just search model rocket scientist and you will find them they're easy to find welcome podcast listeners welcome live viewers this is down ballot we do the show live every tuesday 7 30 p.m pacific till it's over and then it's followed by local love tonight local love will be hosted by a uh, chip deville sit this one out because we have uh, two guests and three mics and so i figure uh, chip can host the show Plus, I'm a little burned out, so give me a chance to kick back and relax, knock back a couple brews while I watch my own show from the couch here in the studio. I'm producer Dave, and you can find me damn near anywhere. And this is the councilman. You can find me on Twitter at t h e underscore councilman, uh, and any uh, also up on the uh, contact page on the Echoplex Media website, where you can find all of our amazing hosts and all of our amazing cohorts. Um, they are all fabulous people. You should follow all of us, um, and especially producer Dave because he's spicy.
I'm a little too spicy lately. Been getting <laughs> sometimes. Been sometimes. getting uh, been getting some warning messages from Twitter lately. So. <laughs> oh, very nice. And uh, and uh, you know, slip up into his DMs if you really have some fun stuff to say. Um, I definitely encourage everyone. Do not who's DM out there. me. That's absolutely incorrect. <laughs> you want people slipping into your DMs? Uh, people, if they, if people really want to send me a message, they know where to send me a message, and it's not Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well. <laughs> Then do not do not DM producer Dave for any reason, or he will bite your head off. Um, welcome to the show. As you know, this is Down Ballot. We do this every Tuesday night, seven thirty Pacific, right here on t- live on Twitch, and then downloading and streaming on your favorite podcatcher of choice. Um, this is a opportunity for us to dig deep into local uh, politics, local news, local derp, and anything that strikes our fancy that pops up on uh, KPIX or Cron or one of our local news news stations. Um, and sure, certainly anything you send us. So please get up in the Discord, if you're not already, for Echoplex Media and uh, drop some links into the Bay Area News channel. Uh, that will alert us to the fact that there is there are folks out there who care about this as much as we do. Um, and you can also drop links that are local to you. If you do not live in the Bay Area, we, we try to keep this global as well as local. Um, and if you send us enough crazy links from your neighborhood, we might actually do a whole show devoted to it. So, you know, look out for that. Uh, well, it might be a good else? idea for next week, actually, to take a trip somewhere else. Possibly. I was also thinking of a little uh, ballot box bingo, because we do have a primary election coming up and folks have their ballots now. So they might need help from us in terms of just figuring out what the fuck they're voting for. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Well, maybe the week after we'll uh, visit somebody's neighborhood. That'll give us a good chance to maybe scope out the scene somewhere else, too. So that'll be good. That'll be right after Memorial Day. I think there might be some pretty nice derp from just about anywhere uh, after Memorial Day. A chance to bring out all the all the fun crazies. Is it Memorial Day that you're not supposed to wear white after, or is that Labor Day, or like is that just a stupid thing that people used to say when people thought it mattered what color clothes you wore? I was just told not to wear green after Arbor Day, out of respect for the trees. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, so I think it's Labor Day with the white. Um, I never really got that. I'm not much of a fashion maven, but I also don't wear a whole lot of like white on the outside. White to me is sort of like an interior color. I have a few white tees. I have a few white tees, but then I always end up, I always end up like spilling a beer on them or something at a show. And then now they have a fucking weird (laughs) spot on it that looks like it could be pee, you know? (laughs) (laughs) It's hard for me to get away with not wearing like a white, uh, you know, dress shirt under a suit, of course, that has a color to it or under a jacket. So, um, so white can be hard to avoid. Um, just like in, in society, right? The whites are everywhere. (laughs) Uh, speaking of which, um, speaking of the whites, Pearl Jam. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> leading off tonight uh a local teen uh was lucky enough to get to go on stage and fucking rock with pearl jam at the oakland arena and uh terry mcsweeney is going to tell us more about how this came to be it was an exciting night for a north bay teenager to say the least he's a drummer got to get up on stage and play with pearl jam at their show in oakland He's good. Famed grunge band played at the Oakland Arena. Pearl Jam had been performing without drummer Matt Cameron because he tested positive for COVID. So the band had other drummers come up and fill in. They also welcomed Kai Newkermans to the stage. Kai plays in a band out of Mill Valley called The Alive. He knows Eddie Vedder's daughter. Vedder is Pearl Jam's lead singer. It's not what you know, it's who you know. It's a good connection there. <laughs> yes. Newkermans, who's a student at Tam High, sent her a video of himself playing a Pearl Jam song. Apparently he did a good job. He was in class when he found out about the gig. <laughs> it's called Mind Your Manners. And it was surreal playing with them. In- insane crowd. It was kind of intimidating, all the people there. And I, I compared it to the shows I played with the alive and it was pretty next level. Where does he go from here? I know he's already played with Pearl Jam. (laughs) He practiced a song with the band before the show. He says they introduced him and afterwards they told him he did a really great job. Kai's band is also playing at bottle rock later this month. That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. I mean, just, just drop it now, right? Like, uh, done, done it all. It's been Kai Newkerman. Um, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. It is, it is definitely who you know. Absolutely. Um, I wonder how he knows Vetter's daughter, but anyway, from school. Um, but his band's certainly going to blow up pretty soon. That's pretty awesome. I remember, uh, 
REM did a whole tour without their drummer once because uh, he, he had an aneurysm, something like that. And they had like they recruited you know backup drummers and celebrity drummers to come and jam with them. Um, so I wonder if Pearl Jam's going to be doing that while Matt Cameron's out. Matt Cameron's a fucking amazing drummer, by the way. Yeah, pretty good band. Pretty good band for having you know been around for thirty years. Yeah, I mean I'm not super into Pearl Jam myself, but uh, I just thought they there was just like these few bands that all kind of sounded exactly the same. Yeah, we yeah. used to. What did we call it? We called it uh days of the stone seven mary stone temple creed jam that was the <laughs> exactly. that was the sound that we were talking about those bands all sounded exactly the fucking For sure. same so and and i i don't know how, how you feel but nirvana didn't sound like any of them and that was why they no. were especially cool like no. just because they did they sounded like nothing else um, no. and that that was what made them unique even though even though uh even though uh even though their singer turned out to be a chemtrail potato smashing pumpkins also didn't really sound like anything else out there yeah, no, very much so. There were some very, very cool, unique bands that uh, cropped. The Pixies are another one that, that popped to mind from the early nineties. So I was, eighties. I was. People were talking. Oh, you know, Kurt Cobain. If he was alive today, I'm like, dude. If Kurt Cobain was alive today, he might be tweeting. He might be tweeting about cancel culture. So just be careful. Just be you know, careful what you what you, you know, speculate on. <laughs> it was actually. Um, he was actually getting from what I've. I mean, I've read a lot. And I've just looked into it and whatever done my research. But um, he was actually getting into country music and western music towards the end of his life, and he was kind of headed there a little bit in that direction with the unplugged uh, work that they did. You know. Um, so I would have been really curious. I know he was also working with Michael Stipe and looking at trying to do something with REM. And that just, that intrigues me to no end. Um, the, the potential for collaborations that were lost there. So anyway, we're getting sidetracked, but cool on this, on this dude. Great Kai. Great for you. Hope your band succeeds at, a uh, at bottle rocket or bottle rock. Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the alive apparently is his band, which of course alive is a Pearl Jam classic. So who knows? So Maybe let's move on into winners and losers. I don't even know or care what this next clip is about, to be perfectly honest, but I'm going to bring it up and I'm just going to yeah. say, listen, Cron 4, if you're <laughs> going to, if you're going to steal our bit, what you need to do is at least join the Patreon at like the $5 level or something. Like if you're going to steal our bit. Yeah. It looks like retail spending is up. So maybe those folks can spend a little more on our Patreon. <laughs> Time now to talk winners and losers on Wall Street with financial expert Rob Black joining us from Rob. Day, Rob, where it looks like across the board we're seeing some pretty positive trading, which what is kind of sweater, nice Rob. considering how much stocks have been beat up here recently. Wow. I don't count on it sticking around for too long. Uh, on Wall Street, we call these dead cat balances. So there's a little bit of bargain hunting. I'm doing a little bargain hunting, picking up some stocks, but we haven't seen capitulation. That's when I get a call to be on Cron at the five o'clock news, the six o'clock news, the seven o'clock news, the eight o'clock news, the nine o'clock news. Yeah. It's people are freaked out and scared. Um, you see a collapse of a business. You right. see something dramatic happen like that. Um, we've had six down weeks, the S&P 500, seven down weeks straight in the Dow. Um, and yet there's a study that was released that 40% of investors who have sold in last year regret it. Don't do anything crazy. California gas prices hit six dollars today. Um, that's the highest. Like that sweater. Don't do anything crazy. Like that sweater. The nation. Walmart came out with their earnings, and they're kind of an interesting one because they do a lot of those rollbacks on inflation, mm. um, and they kind of represent the average consumer in America, not the high-end luxury Bay Area person. Um, and they're saying their their earnings were okay. They got hit with inflation. They, their outlook isn't great. Right. But they're saying the consumer's holding up okay. So that was kind of nice to get that news. And United Airlines said, you know. We, we had a great quarter. Um, they're saying really good things about booking trends. So uh, the economy's fine. The retail mm -hmm. spending is good. Walmart's okay. Uh, the Wall, Wall Street's kind of factoring worst case scenarios, and we're just not seeing those come to fruition yet. Well, let's talk a little bit more about retail spending because I guess the latest numbers from April show that it is actually up uh, almost a full percentage point, despite the fact that prices have been going up. How do you read that? Um, well, things cost more, so people have to spend more money on them, therefore the fucking number goes up. Yes. Yes. All of these things. Yes. Just, their version of winners and losers sucks. Yeah. It's, it's, it's putting me to sleep. Actually. I'm like, I'm starting to realize why so many people are out of the loop when it comes to wealth and wealth management, because listening to the people talk about it, who know a thing or two about it is just mind numbing sometimes, but it's meant to be that way. So then only the whites get their, their benefits. People that have the patience and the time to sit there and decipher everything that's being said. Not yeah. like Raj Matai. So yeah, I was I was definitely not impressed with their winners and losers segment. There was nothing, nothing to laugh at. <clears throat> no, I mean he didn't even get to the losers yet, and we were already like a minute and a half, two minutes into it, and he was just doing winners. And we all know there's no winners, no police malfeasance. 
Yeah. I mean, no, uh, yeah, no poop. No poop. No poop on the street. There's no poop in front of the artisan cupcake just, shop in their winners and losers segment. Right. Just Wall Street. Maybe there's poop on Wall Street. We don't know. But he, because he was not talking about that. He was just talking about the stocks and stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you want to, <clears throat> if you want to make your dump count, do it in front, do it on Wall Street. I'd say so. Like right in front of that statue of the little girl, you know, with the, with the bull. Duke, right there. That'll, that'll get on the national news. That's a, that's a national poop story, right there. <laughs> Telling you, you got to that's it's, you got to elevate your game if you're trying to make a point. If you're trying to get your your you know, message out there, you gotta elevate your game. You got to you know talk to people who are like going to the Oscars and get them to like wear something, right? You know, with your message on it, or or to say it when they get their acceptance or they win their Oscar and their acceptance speech, right? Like shout you out. You got to go big, right? Just or, or just. Big. Or like I said, just poop somewhere on Wall Street. So somebody at the Met Gala, when they're interviewed on the, as they're going in, they're like, also shout out to Ted who took a, took a dump on Wall Street. <laughs> what are you wearing? I'm wearing a dump that Ted took. <laughs> he, dumped, he dumped on me and that's my Met costume. We're meta. We're meta. So apparently there was a new report on uh, homelessness and it's yes. a mixed, mixed bag. Yes, it's called the the point in time census um, uh, of the unhoused uh, across California and locally. And we're going to hear about what's going down in the Bay Area. We have new information now about the homelessness across the Bay Area. Despite hundreds of millions of dollars spent during the pandemic to help the problem, the homeless population is growing. The data is out and only one county saw a decrease. That county, San Francisco. NBC Bay Area's Ian Cole has more. New data shows there are around 35,000 unhoused people across the Bay Area due to a number of factors. Advocates say the biggest issue is the lack of affordable housing, as the Bay Area also suffers from the greatest income inequality in the nation, according to the Brookings Institution. The report shows the number of homeless people compared to three years ago. San Francisco is the only county to drop. Mayor Breed saying, quote, it shows we're starting to make progress. As for Santa Clara County, it saw a 3% increase and now has over 10,000 homeless people. The highest spike in Contra Costa and Alameda counties both point to the effects of the pandemic, which put many out of work. But despite that, advocates point to two positives. One, the rate of those increases was much lower than previous counts. And two, the number of people getting into shelters or housing increased in every county. We're happy that things haven't been increasing even faster. Uh, We believe that that's largely due to a lot of prevention efforts that have been in place during the pandemic, including an eviction moratorium. Jeff Scott is with the San Jose Housing Department. There are several hundred more homeless people today in San Jose than there were in 2019, unfortunately. Uh, Most of those people are in shelters. Most of those people, um, almost all of our homeless families are sheltered. He says moving forward, what's needed is funding for more homes, along with less red tape to build affordable housing faster, something the legislature is working on. Right now we have um, only approximately 29 low-income apartments available for every 100 households that needs a low-income apartment. So we have a severe lack of affordable housing Bay Area-wide. Regional advocates are asking for the state to use some of the nearly $100 billion surplus to expand programs like HomeKey that gives cities and counties money to buy hotels and buildings and turn them into housing. Homeless services are also offered on site. Counties are required to do this point-in-time homeless count every two years, but didn't last year during the pandemic. A final report for each county comes out in the summer as they strive to get the number of homeless on the streets to zero. Ian Cole, NBC, Bay Area News. That number in Contra Costa County is super, super troubling because that's like a lot of like single family homes and stuff up there. There's no like big cities in Contra Costa County. So it's, uh, it's yeah, other than Rich- Richmond, I mean, that side of that, you're right. Um, and also I, I it's, but it's also, it's not maybe a, you, you've got folks who normally would be in San Francisco, but they're running out of room in San Francisco, right? And you're seeing, a sort of the the spread um of of the of the dilemma yeah i it's not good news no matter how you slice it right um the, i guess the good news is that we are as a community like housing more people um but just as many people are finding themselves unhoused you know as we house other folks so it's it seems like a uh intractable problem that 
we can't catch up with. Um, but I, I can tell you this, no matter how fast they worked, you're never going to get to zero, right? Like you, you re, we're in a capitalist society. <laughs> so there's always going to be some level of poverty. There's already, always going to be some level of unhoused. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, but uh, so you're not going to get to zero. I think a but, good, I think a good metric to have, and nobody's ever going to do this data, or if, if they do, it's not going to get a lot of attention. I'd like to see per County, the number of people worth ten million dollars and then how many how many homeless people are there out there for every person worth ten million or more dollars that'd be some real that'd be some real kind of brass tax numbers on like wealth inequality in people's in people's counties yeah and those folks tend to have the the homes up in you know woodside los altos hills that have like you know 10 bedrooms and 11 bathrooms and go for nine million dollars and three acres right of land and they're living up there with just them and their spouse or their you know <laughs> or their uh dog. Their, their staff or their dog right um in this huge house right having people over for the weekend you know in the 10 bedrooms um meanwhile people are living on the street you know and and in spaces and in crafty i might add you know it, creating spaces for themselves like those mini studio apartments out of like wood paneling and nothing else um and some some freaking bungee cords so i mean uh, you you do you do what you got to do i mean you absolutely i mean to be honest with you there's there are programs out there to you know um employ and to deploy uh unhoused folks um you know, to give them a, give them some pay, give them a place to stay, um, and get them you know contributing to whatever the the well being of our of our community. They're, these are really mostly very smart, well educated, very crafty people. So um, they could do a hell of a lot more than like clean up graffiti or pick up trash in the park, right? Like I, I would rather have people with lived experience with homelessness working deep embedded in like city government and county government so that we have people who not only know what what it's like firsthand right to be there but also have that ingenuity and that creativity and have tapped into that and might be able to tap into that with policy i don't know crazy ideas but right here on down ballot and the state sort of keeps kicking the can on the eviction bubble that's coming um right like they you know i was they kicked it back to uh, uh, what is it, uh, July 31st. Yeah, it's like three months at a time, basically. They're pushing it back. Right. Uh, but <clears throat> during that time from the end, I forget when it was, the end of March through July 31st, there's no more rental aid available. So... <clears throat> they extended that to, or at least the opportunity to apply for it. There's no guarantee you get it. It's right. And you, and, you, you and, you have it. To, and you have to keep paying rent. You have to start being able to pay rent like now right like right. You, you have to it's, it's retroactive to prior months so you know i don't know i don't know what's going to happen here um <clears throat> i think it's i don't know i it's there's not a lot of numbers out there on how many yeah. people are applying you know what percentage yeah. of people you know get get like made whole you know what percentage of um like shitty landlords are going to try to evict anyway just because that person engaged in that program all oh, the program says you can't use that as a criteria for eviction but it's not like the, a lot of people like their lease ended ended and now they're on a month to month and right. like so at, at that month to month all you got to do is give people 30 or 60 days depending on how long they've been right. in their place anyway and you can kind of at will evict somebody so yeah. it's a uh, it's going to be a mess it's going to be a mess unless like unless something dramatic happens. I could see something happening at the state level simply because Democrats have such a broad majority there. Um, and this is such a fundamental kind of an issue, right? It would seem I can see something happening at the state level. It's not in so much like the federal level where you just cannot, no matter what the house does, right? I don't care if you gave Nancy Pelosi a hundred person, 200 person, you know, a member majority, it's not going to solve anything because the Senate is a fucking mess and it's, it's systemically fucked. So at the state level here, we have a little more potential because we have Democrats in just a really solid position of power. But the problem with that is that they're in a solid position of power and they don't necessarily need to go, you know, full on progressive or as far as we would like them to go, maybe they just play it safe and, and try to maintain that majority and just not fuck up. Um, so that what that would trigger would be what you already see, which is local governments, cities and counties stepping in and saying, okay, we're going to try and um, we're going to try and 
uh, provide some relief to folks if the state's not going to, if the federal government's not going to. We need to we need to provide some protections to folks at the local level, and those are the battles that for us on down ballot are going to be really fun because they're going to happen in the public eye on YouTube, and we can go in into public comment and watch and see how truly disgusting some people are, um, and we can see where uh, the true colors of our elected officials are when those when those issues come come home to roost. There's some interesting stuff coming out of Berlin that I haven't looked into enough, but a lot of housing advocates are posting a lot about what's happening in Berlin. There's some, and I'm not, I'm probably not going to get this exactly right, but there's some proposals in the city of Berlin to, that would basically say that after you've lived somewhere a certain amount of time, now you have some equity in your residence Mm -hmm. that you can draw on either to purchase another place or eventually you will have enough equity that the landlord has to let you buy your residence out. And those those are some real interesting ideas. Cause I know a lot of people who've been in an apartment for a very long time, myself included, who have some amount of my rent, their rent was applied to equity. And then mm-hmm. that became like a down payment or whatever. And now your rent yeah. is a mortgage on your place. I feel like that would benefit a lot of people. And then the landlord gets bought out for the place. So they get, a, you know, place is worth a ton more than when they bought it so they get their investment back plus you know they make a profit which you know right like landlords like landlords are just basically hoarding housing and renting it back out to people but it seems like those kinds of programs and that's not the only interesting thing happening in berlin that's the only one that i thought i think i remember enough of to like um to talk about but if people are interested in like new ideas for housing in dense cities, take a look at what's going on in Berlin because the people of Berlin already expropriated some property from some landlords during the pandemic. So <laughs> landlords are housing providers, producer Dave, as we, as we all have heard from uh, many, many public comments and memos. Um, yeah. And there's actually, there are actually some policies coming forth um, in San Jose and other municipalities uh, locally. One of them is the community opportunity to purchase act which would be a policy that allows uh, nonprofits or the residents of a rental complex or a rental a rental housing uh, unit to have first right of refusal or first right of purchase if the landlord decides to sell the property um, and they could buy the property, right, and, and then become the property owners. There's also a, comp- a nonprofit called Landed, I believe they're called that, um, and cities have done this as well too in the past, but they assist people with you know down payments on their first home they, of course, the nonprofit gets a stake, like in the in the equity. So if the if the you know, purchaser decides to sell later on, um, they get a percentage of it. But basically, they're making an investment in um, this homeowner, and the homeowner gets support with their down payment and gets into a home, and and really only has to pay out if they decide to sell the home, right? They, otherwise, they just keep. You know, well, that, that uh, would disincentivize people from abusing the program, at like a flipper. Yeah. Yeah, and they but they should keep accruing equity, and then at some point they can buy out landed, right? And they can say, "Here's your your investment back plus whatever percentage is in their contract, right?" And then uh, and then they have the home. So there are opportunities out there like that, and cities like San Jose have had homeowner and home buyer pro, uh, support programs in the past too, right? Like mini grants and things like that. So it's possible. The question is finding the money and then finding the political will to do it, um, and getting past these fucking my, this minority of nimby's and conservative pricks who who you know whine and whine about taxpayer dollars going to subsidize you know lazy brown people basically is what the, the argument is. um and it's just disgusting and it needs to stop and if any if you, just i'm not going to tell you who to vote for in any election but always be aware of white men coming to you and saying they have the answer to solve everything right and they're, they're going to fix everything and make your city clean and vibrant and uh and uh safe again right be be especially wary of that if you live in a very diverse place like san jose you know what i'm saying correct correct so i'm i'm very hopeful that you know white male tears will not prevail in any election coming forth but we'll see we'll see what happens anyway um we're always we get pretty deep here on down ballot if you haven't tuned in before now you know (laughs) um speaking of deep um moms are freaking out across the bay area because milk or at least the 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 formulaic milk is definitely on a uh, massive shortage 
I talked with one new mom today who said she'd been to several drugstores and couldn't find formula. So she finally reached out to her friends and family across the nation to get them to track it down and send it to her so she could feed her baby. At pharmacies across the Bay Area, low or no supply of infant formula, leaving new moms on a frantic search. When you go to all of the stores within a two hour radius and you can't find what you need um, and have to resort to other measures. It's it's really stressful. At this CVS in Fremont, they're limiting formula to three canisters per family. And you have to ask employees to get the products for you from behind a counter. This afternoon, encouraging news about beefing up supply. The company at the center of the shortage, Abbott Nutrition, announcing it plans to resume production in two weeks if the FDA says it's okay, but added from the time Abbott restarts the site, it will take six to eight weeks before product is available on the shelves. In the meantime, the FDA is working on other ways to get formula to babies. We're taking a number of measures, including getting all the manufacturers to step up, getting the Sturgis plant uh, up and going, but also uh, importing or bringing to bear product that was intended for other countries. Here at Mother's Milk Bank in San Jose, which offers donated breast milk, the formula shortage is also having an impact. We have seen an increase in inquiries for donor human milk. Uh, I think it's mainly based on the heightened media attention to uh, the formula shortage. You must have a doctor's prescription in order to get donated breast milk. Not only is the demand for milk up 25%, but the number of moms wanting to donate breast milk is up too. The Milk Bank Executive Director also attributes that in part to the nationwide formula shortage. In Fremont, Marianne Favreau, NBC Bay Area News. That's a lot of mama's milk right there. Yeah, and it's like, <clears throat> it's a bad situation. Like a lot of people are trying to blame it on the federal government, but what happened was <clears throat> at least part of the problem was that this Abbott, this company Abbott, they had a couple bad batches of formula. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing like life threatening, but certainly not something you want to feed your baby. And so they had to stop production and figure out what was going on. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I mean, j just in general, this is part of a broader. Uh, issue that we're dealing with and it's certainly going to impact a lot of folks and this is you know some people say oh we'll just breastfeed your baby it's that um it's not that simple not every woman is uh, uh, capable frankly physically of of uh, breastfeeding and, and supplying enough milk for their baby um and that's not their fault at all it's just uh science um and, and percentages so uh yeah, uh, de definitely hope this gets resolved in some some kind of short order. But in the meantime, um, you know, I, it, it's I hate to say it, but if I, you know, these are the kind of things that we're going to have to learn to roll with because uh, what, climate crisis and everything else that we're dealing with um, are just going to lead to more situations like this and shortages like this um, as it, uh, our economy and our our global economy gets disrupted. Um, so get ready. And get ready for for these shortages. Get ready for raids on your not raids, but runs on your local pharmacies and your local CVS and Walgreens. If you think you see some crazy fucks outside of Walgreens right now, wait a few minutes. Just wait. It's going to get even crazier. Yeah, yeah. This is this is an issue. I don't know that much about you know um, what kinds of things would make it so uh, a mother couldn't breastfeed. But I can imagine outside of medical stuff, there's also just the the issue of in cities you need two incomes to survive especially if you have mm -hmm. a little one and so while you're at work you're not able to breastfeed if, if you know if you have a sitter or whatever well your yeah. sitter generally you know not a lot of wet nurses running around out there anymore so you know sure. it's it's you know the the economic stuff is definitely part of the part of the issue here even if the, the women who can breastfeed if they have to be at work you generally don't bring your baby to work because it's right just dis it's can be disruptive at work and that's <clears throat> that's also a perfectly reasonable thing like oh you know you can't actually bring your baby to work every day <laughs> everybody loves your baby we'll do baby fridays right there actually are um uh though lactation uh rooms required at least in public facilities now um every public facility is required to have uh, a space available for women to lactate or to you know, at least pump breast milk um, at some point during the day, because uh, uh, 
it's pretty much the only way you keep up, right? It's not just live active breastfeeding. It's also just collecting it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the uh, public agencies are all required to have these spaces. So you can go to the or county building or city hall and ask where the lactation room is and go in. There's some, there's some magazines and some things to keep you occupied while things are going on. It's pretty exciting. So <clears throat> on our next story, I'm stunned that there's racism in Danville. In the East Bay, on the other side of the hills. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. On, on one side of the hills, it would actually surprise me a bit more. But once you get to that other side of those hills, like when people talk about the Bay Area, I'm like, well, how many sets of hills are you away from the Bay? <laughs> <laughs> like right here, we're zero. We're zero uh, hills. Yeah, we're, we're zero. Yeah, we're exactly we're right, we're, right we're, in the center. We're in zero. Yeah, exactly. If you have to go up and down twice, you're in you're in Central Valley. So right. um, be ready. Anyway, uh, so let's let's learn about up and down once in Danville. Watching Cron Four News at ten. It's horrific that people could, in the wake of a tragedy, think that this is in any way furthering uh, an agenda or a culture mm. or an attitude that should be furthered in our mm. in our country. Now at 10, an East Bay town reacting tonight after masked demonstrators hold up white supremacist signs, what many consider. Thank you for joining us tonight on Crown Point News at 10. I'm Pam Moore. And I'm Ken Wayne. The signs were displayed near a busy intersection in Danville over the weekend. This coming as the nation has been reeling from the mass shooting in which a white gunman is accused of targeting and killing black people at a supermarket. Crown Force Dan Thorne has the story from Danville. This Saturday demonstration in Danville is stirring up outrage and disappointment. The group of masked men were standing near the intersection of Camino Tassajara and Crow Canyon Road the same day as a mass shooting in Buffalo, New York. My initial reaction was one of disgust but not surprise. Veronica Benjamin is a Danville resident and co-founder of Conscious Contra Costa. The organization was formed after the police killing of Tyrell Wilson. Former Danville police officer Andrew Hall shot Wilson last year and is now in jail after he was charged with killing another black man in 2018. Benjamin says white supremacist behavior is not challenged enough in this wealthy East Bay community. Danville is a very, very white city and it's kind of like this last bastion of white privilege and, and wealth hoarding. Whereas Contra Costa County has about a 9 to 10% uh, African American population and Danville that drops to 1%. Danville's mayor denounced the demonstration on Monday, saying in part to Cron 4 News, these people were acting out hate speech. Though not a crime, this was clearly an abhorrent gesture towards people of color. Our town stands united against racism in any form and any acts that direct harm or hatred. The Contra Costa County Sheriff's Office says they responded to the demonstration, but allowed it to continue because no laws were being broken. Benjamin says she is thankful for those in the community who do do stand up against these acts. The small amount of pride I can have for my town is that there are people here who care and I hope that they continue to stand up, show up and put pressure on our town council who does not seem to care as much as some of the residents. Reporting in Danville, Dan Thorne, Cron 4 News. Yep, just not surprising. <clears throat> I wasn't surprised at all to hear that Danville was uh, like 1% black. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm completely with the activist there. I, I'm sorry, I've already, I'm an asshole. I've already forgotten her name, but um, I'm completely with her. This is not at all surprising. It's frustrating and sad and just depressing, but it's not surprising in the least. And the fact that these guys are all out there wearing masks, they should fucking wear masks. Cause, uh, it's the only way anyone would have the balls or uh, the ganas to go out there and carry a sound like that in the first place. But I, I so, also wonder too, like this is, Danville is not like a bastion of conservatism, right? But you go over one set of hills like we were talking about sets of hills right, right. um it's there you, right so yeah. maybe you know maybe it's some danville residents and then people from outside of the community like we always see in portland right will come in yeah. and like yeah. kind of pad the numbers i don't know for sure i'm just speculating that that could be going on because that's a very common thing actually yeah. is for people with this viewpoint to go to um more liberal places um you know i live in a place that's there's not a whole lot of black people in the city I live in either, but it's not white like Danville. It's just the demographics here are different. You know what I'm saying? It's not. Yeah. There's, there's I, a lot I of, a lot of, a lot of Asian, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of Latinx people here. Right. A lot of queer people here actually in Campbell. When I, True. when I was looking for where to live in the South Bay, everything pointed me here. 
Um, that's good. I'm sure Campbell's Chamber of Commerce would love to hear that, actually. So no, for real. Yeah. Well, it was 10 years ago, but even my roommate Rob noticed, he's like, there's a lot of gay guys around here. I'm like, Rob, that guy's just dressed nice. He might not be gay. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking that this group, you know, maybe, maybe at the core, you know, it's white supremacy and just hatred and bigotry, and maybe they're just detracting on an adjacent level guys who white dudes who really like wearing gym shorts and knee high socks, you know, and white sneakers. It's all about the fashion, baby, the fashion. Absolutely. So, um, I think they're attracting a few of those folks as well to this cause who may be just like, okay, I'm, a, I'm all right with the white lives matter sign because, you know, these guys really know how to dress. And I, I feel like we have an affinity there. So, um, let's not discount that fashion has a really strong, uh, uh, you know, peer pressure element, right. And, a, a really strong attraction element. So, so um, I'm wondering, was this like spontaneously organized after the news of the shooting or was this a coincidence? I know it doesn't Jesus really, Christ, I hope, I hope either one is, is not true. Well, what I'm saying is like that if it's, if it was, if it was like organized really quickly when the news of the shooting happened then these people are just like extra disgusting, you know what I'm saying? Like they're like a step beyond. What's the phone tree for that? Like, who who's responsible for the phone tree for that? Like, this, <laughs> hey, there's been another fucking uh, white supremacist uh, shooting, or another black person has died at the hand of a white supremacist. Like, alert your flock. Let's get out and wave the signs and show our support for the white race. Yeah, that it must be that. I don't know. It must be some sort of like cha email chain or maybe like a, a Yahoo group or something. A Facebook group. AOL. Do they, do they all have groups? Facebook, Facebook. group. Yeah, Facebook, Facebook. group. That's, yeah, yeah. 100% right. Facebook. Yeah, you're right. It's like those... We need to do a parody of those Facebook group commercials. I think that's been that's been dying to be made for a long time. Oh, man. If, if we had some money. Those. We had some fucking yeah. money. The one, that, the one that really tugs at the heartstrings, right? With the... Ba like, for me, at least, you know, with the baseball fans and their daughters going to the baseball game, right? And the Yankee and the Met fan get along because they're both dads right and they, they have their kids at the ball game even though they don't like each other's team right um <laughs> i could totally see a, a spoof of that when it comes to like the the january 6th mob or or any of these yahoos that we we tend to propagate in our shows here on echo bucks media um speaking of yahoos uh postal workers god bless them to be honest with you i i do like our postal our personal postal worker here in our neighborhood but in general um kind of a kooky bunch and uh, they got some things to say about parking in Sunnyvale. Well, it's a story that you will only see here on NBC Bay Area. Postal workers in the South Bay say that they are will just wheeling around, literally, just yeah. to find a solution to the parking problem in that area. Yeah, so they're not talking about their mail trucks. They're talking about their personal vehicles as they roll into work. They say it's been years, but they, the postal workers in Sunnyvale and their tech neighbors, they have not been able to reach a solution, and they say they are tired of paying the price for Sunnyvale's expansion. Here's NBC Bay Area's Ginger Konohara Saab with the clear message they're trying to send. Chris, Marcus, you can see the problem that these postal workers are facing daily behind me. There really is very little parking on these streets, and that's because of the construction and expansion that's happening around in the area. Now, the postal workers say they're tired of bearing the grunt of the city's development. I gotta get here half an hour, four or five minutes early just to find parking. Charles Wilson isn't alone. He and his postal co-workers, some who travel as far as Tracy and San Francisco, have made it a part of their daily routine to look for parking up to an hour before their shift starts. But still, that isn't enough. He says there's no parking when he gets to work, and he has gotten the tickets to show for it. I've gotten about five, six tickets. I paid them all off, but it was an unnecessary financial burden on me as well as all my fellow carriers. It's not fair. Odell Garcia says the development has been going on for years now and they've been putting up with the parking situation. But it has gotten so bad he's reached out to the mayor's office and the city engineer, but to no avail. We just want to come to work, be able to park in a safe spot and go to work and do our job. Safety is a big issue for Martha Flores, who says she was followed while walking the long distance back to her car. I feel unsafe and I went back inside the office the next day I told management and one of the management started laughing. He's like, wow, at your age, you still getting guys after you? I said, this is not about 
It's about my safety. The postal worker. Oh, fire her manager. Seriously, that was that's rude. Good lord. Should, that should not be happening. Numerous times to local leaders to get help with this issue. The mayor's office got back to us saying, in part, the post office is a federal agency. When they leased their current site, it was determined that the city did not have jurisdiction over its use. We were not able to review their parking needs or issue any parking requirements. Now, this leaves workers with uh, very little to no choice at all. They're hoping they can convince the city to change some of these parking rules, at least during construction, or strike up a deal with their neighbor, Google, to allow them parking options on their site. In the South Bay, Ginger Conejero Saab, NBC Bay Area News. Not for nothing, there ain't no, there's like no light rail access in Sunnyvale. None. Hmm. No, yeah, it's, it's swag. Um. I mean, it goes through Sunnyvale, right? But it's just, it's just not really accessible. So I guess somewhere along that Tasman going down to Mountain View, it might hit Sunnyvale, but mm -hmm. it's like not anywhere inside of Sunnyvale, if that makes sense. It's like one, it's around like 101, I think, is yeah, where it yeah. is. Or Moffat Field is where it goes through Sunnyvale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, th this, this is just, you know, okay, so th uh, the way, reason I love this and I plug this, this could have been under down ballot watch, I suppose, because it is more of a local, local, you know, politics-ish story. The reason why I, I thought this would be plugged in under winners and losers best because is because uh, there, there's no winners here at all. It's it's a perfect winners and losers story. The The city is a loser because they absolutely can regulate parking and other you know, amenities and other community impacts um, in the development agreement with anyone, right? Especially on a big tech project, they can absolutely mitigate things like that and ask for concessions. Like, you know, you will provide X number of parking spaces offsite at some other location, right? For these postal workers. And now granted that might've required USPS stepping up and the postal worker stepping up at the time the project was approved and saying, Hey, we want this concession. So, losers there too um because they didn't get involved at the time and i you know i happen to know that the guy who was interviewed the gentleman who was interviewed is charles one of the uh the, you know the leaders of this instigators of this movement is a freaking troll he's a troll on uh facebook he's constantly sending out you know uh, links to videos to me and to other people i know um in you know young political circles you know and uh with some i'm not going to say controversial opinions it's just you know incessant uh you know derp laden uh you know uh, commentary uh intended to you know just fire people up without a whole lot of thought to it um so i'm i'm, I'm skeptical of you know him instigating this this movement of postal workers to say that they're not having they don't have enough opportunity to park i mean at the end carpool <laughs> or, or find find some other way right um in, uh, or get involved earlier in the process and city step up and do something to help folks because these postal workers are you know been shit on pretty much throughout the pandemic um so why don't we do something nice for them for you know change. i just kind of contrast it to when i have to pop by the local post office here mm -hmm. <clears throat> i don't know if you know it's at um the one in hamilton uh that's the big one but there's a lot of fucking parking there too uh, I'm talking yeah. about the small one over at uh maybe I shouldn't say it's a little too too Oh true sorry yeah I didn't yeah, like it too, too, No 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 too, no the Hamilton is fine there. if I was to tell you the one right next to me that's a little too maybe a little too like, specific maybe too specific too specific for for uh, for the show But um yeah it's near the, it's at the end of the strip on my right. end of the strip Right and no, there's I know just what you're about. it's it's basically inside of an apartment complex kind of mm -hmm. and there's just all this parking everywhere and it's like mm -hmm. those those people have no problem parking there, you know. It's no, never it's all. it's never very full. <clears throat> and I feel like I feel like either the apartment complex and the the building, the office building, the post office is in came to some kind of agreement, or I don't know, they just got lucky, right? But in this case, over yeah. in Sunnyvale, <clears throat> Sunnyvale basically probably doesn't want light rail, right? Because they probably think it brings in, you know, and and but, well, they didn't want Bart, and we didn't want Bart, right? So same yeah, reason. Yeah, it's oh transit is great over on Riff Raff. Tran transit is great over on the uh west side. Yeah. Oh yeah. Don't, which is which is weird because that. it's it's things have shifted a little bit. When I first got to the South Bay, this west this west part where I live was the desirable part. 
And now more and more, you're seeing the Sunnyvale Cupertino Mountain View seeming mm-hmm. to be the more desirable part. And it's like mostly yes. due to proximity to work, but there none of those places wanted t- to have anything to do with like the other kind of development that goes with putting all this business in where you're at. Yeah. And so it's not the Google employees going to get squeezed out. It's the fucking post. It's the fucking your mail carrier. Yes, and it's like, well, exactly. fuck, man. If the, shit, if the shit don't always roll downhill, you know? Yep. Absolutely. It's, it's the, the integral middle missing middle, right? Teachers, postal workers, uh, you name it, nurses, um, some of the most critical people in our society, right? Um, who we don't, we don't think about, um, but they, they make just as shit wages as anyone else, right? And they're just as mistreated as anyone else. And the costs aren't going down for them either. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're at a spot where, um, you know, it, it's going to really get untenable to have a functioning economy, um, just given the way that it, it breaks down. And it, it's partly capitalism's fault. It's also just, you know, human nature's fault too. Well, it just so seems, we, it just seems to me like, seems to me like, <clears throat> As things got more and more dense over here in my part of town, the the city, even the little city I live in, like did things to address it, like mm-hmm. protected bike lanes everywhere. Yeah. The city was excited to have light rail come here when it came here. Like, but then right next to me is Los Gatos, and they did light rail was supposed to go out there, and they're like, nope. But at least no. Los Gatos isn't building all these all these goddamn office complexes where four thousand people are supposed to be working, right? Right. Well, that's not the the point anyway, right? It's supposed to be a bedroom community, and then the the transit is supposed to take the people from where they live to where they work. It's just that everyone Los Gatos, you know, they they love their Teslas, they love their SUVs, and they'd rather sit in their car for pretty much just as long as it would take, given the the way that light rail is laid out to get to work, right? Um, and spend a little money for the gas now, even, um, to have that luxury of sitting in their car, as opposed to what we know is a much better experience, frankly, sitting on the train. Well, but if they work in Sunnyvale, they don't even have that option. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. But I mean, unless they want to, unless they're ready to get off the train, get on a bus and, you know, or take a shuttle to where they work. Oh, and the, the tech, the tech companies will provide shuttles from the nearest light rail station. They will indeed. They will indeed. But for everyone else, you know, the, the folks who, um, work in service jobs and food service and everywhere else you know um it, they're kind of sol they got to figure it out that's why you need some sort of universal pass right it's i think it's all right to have a train to bus to whatever to scooter system you know everyone needs to get where they're where they're going in and the train can't go everywhere right it's a train um but uh yeah i think that that's why it's more important to have a universal pass or universal system with it you just tag on tag off no matter where you are with your clipper card right it's it can it can work on across all agencies and all types of transit throughout the bay area i don't see why that's i don't see how that's so hard to figure out but it seems like everyone's got their little fiefdom and everyone likes their fees everyone wants to make sure they get their money um so that's that's where the way it gets in the way all right uh, well who needs well, to get their shit together well literally foster city let's find out Well, ruffled feathers in Foster City, geese, lots of them, have taken over the streets. Now, the geese themselves, they aren't the problem. What they're leaving behind is the city has a plan to kill the geese, but a San Rafael animal protection group is fighting to stop that plan. Here's NBC Bay Area's Sharon Katsuda. They're nice to have. We found the geese today waddling around in the sun, minding their own business. But Aww. we did see signs of what seems to be causing a stink in the neighborhood. There's poop mm. on the sidewalk. That's not the only place neighbors have seen the geese droppings. I used to swim out, out there quite a bit, but uh, because of the um, amount of uh, poop out there, I, uh, you know, I decided to uh, not swim. So as of late, I've been doing more running. So what to do with all the geese that neighbors say appear to stay year round? The Foster City spokesperson says the city has applied for government permits to have a lethal option, but no decision has been made. The group in defense of animals plans to protest the lethal option at City Hall. Adults can be killed in numerous ways. Among them can be putting them into a mobile uh, gas unit where they're, they're gassed to death. Meantime, neighbors are weighing in. Several we talked to said they definitely don't want to see the geese gassed. 
You don't want to hurt the geese. In Defense of Animals says if you kill off the geese, studies show more will come back within a matter of weeks. That's why the group supports habitat modification. Change what's appealing to the geese instead of the wide open spaces geese like. Plant bushes where they'll fear predators might be hiding. They want the council to consider options on how to coexist with their feathered friends. In Foster City, Sharon Katsuda, NBC Bay Area News. I am not for a geese massacre. Yeah, no geese gassing on our watch, please. Do not massacre that, the fucking geese. No need for that at all. I mean, we're the ones encroaching on their habitat. So um, if they're pooping on our stuff, you know, that's that's their right. Um, we, we're the ones that paved over their paradise. So uh, let's be kinder to the geese. I'm I'm totally with the... Uh, the Audubon Society or whoever this is that's that's stepping up for them. Um, you go. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know the the solution. I'm just worried about the dude who was swimming in that river, like right in the middle of a city. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Why are you John, swimming in that river? I love the Chiron, John Farsich neighbor, and I wanted to say like neighbor slash rogue swimmer or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, or extreme swimmer. I swim in the most disgustingly polluted channels on earth, bro. And look at me. I feel great. I've only got a couple rashes today. Right. Like there, I'm sure there's just way worse things to be worried about in that body of water than a little bit of geese shit, you know? Yes. I would hope so. I would hope so. But, um, yeah, stay out of the, stay out of the poop water. Um, and don't eat, you know, don't eat the geese shit. Just, you know, maybe, maybe let's invest in some folk. Let's get the homeless to come and pick up the geese shit. Oh God! It sounds like almost as that sounds like almost as bad a solution as just gassing the geese. Oh come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horse shit. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't even bullshit. That's horse shit. All right. Anyway, all right. Well, moving on down ballot because you know the election's coming up in in June. But this isn't really about the election. This is more just local local uh, public agency derp. So it looks so like I, so it looks like uh between Marin and Sonoma counties they've installed some transit. Yeah, because you know if you got to get from Marin to Sonoma to sent you know, on your wine sampling tour, you know you might as well be taking transit to get there, right? Actually, fucking cool. I'm with yeah, it. Why not? I'm down. Let's hear more. It's here for this week's Travel Tuesday, and Gianna, Smart Rail is hoping to make that trip a little easier for commuters. Yeah, we're right in the heart of drive time now for the morning commute, so it gets busy on 101, and that is what they're hoping to help commuters with. I caught up with Smart's general manager, Eddie Cummins, to talk about the upcoming schedule changes, which start next month, and I also had a chance to check in with commuters who are using the rail system as a smart way to get to the Giants games. Mm -hmm a little bit about the experience when people take smart oh, the train is awesome it's a really great ride it's a beautiful ride if you ride up into marin and sonoma county it's just absolutely beautiful the train is extremely smooth it's clean it's well lit and it's just it's just a great ride so starting in june there will be more weekday service specifically for commute hours absolutely during our peak service hours during the morning and the and the p.m peaks uh, we'll be adding additional trips in total. Eddie Cummins. Trips. That'll be five northbound, five southbound. And some tweaks that Smart Train is making this time around is connectivity to go from the rail to the ferry, where today is the perfect day to sail across the bay. It's not just for commuters, but this is an easy way for anyone in Marin County to maybe go to a Giants game or into the city. Oh, absolutely. It's a great way to travel. The idea to take Smart to the Giants game, tell us about that. I uh, just thought it'd be really fun for his 15 year old birthday. Okay, so kind of making it an adventure. Yeah. And all the money you'll save on parking. I hope you got a birthday present. Yeah, yeah, we did. Brand new phone, right, Sammy? Yeah. Okay, Sammy, let's talk about this yeah. phone. First of all, happy birthday. 13? Yeah. Wow. What do you think about wow. taking the train? So wow. Far? Kind of on your adventure down to the game. Um, It's been a pretty fun time. We've been listening to music. And I know you promised your mom you're going to take really good care of that phone you just got for your birthday. Yeah. yeah. We've been totally ignoring our parents. Got this dumb um, OtterBox case, so it's never going to break. Well, I promise you from years of experience with broken phones, it's a good idea. <laughs> I think what's most impressive about Smart 2 is how clean and easy it is to use to get back and forth. We've actually talked about It's clean. About who are she said that many times now. It's clean. That's what I tell people about light rail. Accommodating how 
convenient it is and how nice it is not to worry about traffic and stress and parking and everything else. Yeah, it's but is it clean? Both ways around, you know, uh, it's just a more relaxing way to go. Will you do it again after this? We'll see how the day ends. <laughs> it doesn't depend on a Giants win or not. Not at all. Well, the Giants did win that day, so <laughs> that worked out well for everyone, especially that cutie who was celebrating his birthday. If you uh, are going to take the new or find out the new schedule, it is uh, you can head to their website. June 13th is when all of it starts. And by the way, free parking right now for smart users if you're parking at the train. So that's kind of an incentive as well. Very yeah. convenient, which is always nice when coming into the city. It is. Well, that's good. Yeah. And she's got a little perv there. She's like, hey, cute little cutie, little 13 year old. Hey, it's a little birthday. And don't don't let the QAnon people see that news segment. I like how she's like, oh well, you know that case will be really coming really handy, and he's sort of like, yeah, okay, old lady, thank you, <laughs> thank you, old, for your your comment. Okay, boomer. Well, um, that transfer to the ferry is actually pretty, um, um, probably appealing to a lot of people out there because the ferry oh, is sure. just like kind of a cool way to travel, you know. Oh, it's awesome. I I've been on one, but I'm not to a Giants game. That would be. The legit i would really enjoy that i think but so i'm gonna have to do that once but the thing is there's no ferries from the south bay to the giants game so i'd have to like go to the north bay right and then take the ferry which would be kind of weird but maybe there's one from like the peninsula that we can catch i, I have a feeling like maybe foster city like the escape the go goose poop ferry <laughs> there's poop everywhere get on the boat we're, we're evacuating <laughs> or the goose ferry anyway all right well um Moving on from trains to cars, uh, other forms of transportation, um, looks like the city of San Jose has had a longstanding policy against um, folks driving up and down the same stretch of road. Um, and it uh, looks like someone wants to like not do that anymore. So we're going to learn more about it. And it's got low riders in it, so it's awesome. New at six, it looks like the end of the road for a decades old ban on cruising in San Jose. Low riders have been banned from driving slowly around city streets for 30 years. KPI X5's Kit Doe on why the tide is now changing. The repeal of the cruising ban has cleared a major hurdle, passing the Rules Committee unanimously. It'll now go before the full council. All it needs is six votes to pass. Do you think you've got the votes to pass this through? I do, 100%. For Raul Perales, who grew up cruising and once owned a 65 Impala Super Sport, it's been a long journey from repeatedly getting pulled over by police to now 30 years later as a San Jose council member denouncing the law as racist. This broad stroke policy made it easier to profile and discriminate against those driving a vehicle deemed as a lowrider, particularly young brown people. Oh, no, not the music. Don't do that. I know, right? <laughs> civil rights movement becoming a symbol of resistance and a way to preserve Mexican-American culture. But by the early 90s, low riding became synonymous with crime and gang activity. In 1992, the city council made cruising illegal and cars that were documented driving past police checkpoints multiple times were ticketed. Years of lobbying by lowrider groups led up to this moment last week at the Rules Committee meeting. San Jose Police Lieutenant Stephen Donahue said the cruising ban would be useful for large events. We're asking that the council do not take away this tool. Um, this is a tool that we use to um, ensure the safety of the public. And this is something that while right now it is not a tool that's being used very often, it is something that we do not want to lose out of our toolbox. However, Perales says San Jose police have not issued a single cruising fine in the past two decades. They really don't have the intent to actually criminalize or enforce cruising itself. And so I, my response was that, well, then let's take this off the books as an actual illegal act itself. And with that, the committee voted five to zero to advance the repeal. Davis? Yes. Perales? Keep it low and slow. Yes. Many of the owners from back in the day are now grandfathers themselves, more interested in making cruising a family event. <laughs> do you feel a bit of redemption? I do. Oh, okay. hey. You know, I'm just so happy that. to see it coming back. Coming full circle only took 30 years. Low and slow, indeed. Wait for it. <laughs> See, it jumps pretty good. Yeah, it so does. Got... He's holding on to the phone this time. <laughs> All right. This vote goes before the full council in June. Again, they need six votes. In San Jose, Kit Doe, KPIX5. That was cool that he got in the car. 
I, I thought that was, uh, I saw a couple spots on this uh, press conference and I thought that was the best. Kid Doe's pretty, a pretty good reporter. He's, he's a fun dude. So the music's a little much, but you know, it, it is what it is. There was another report that was just completely off the wall that tried to, you know, equate low riding with uh, uh, sideshows, you know, and then some of that culture. And it's just not the same thing. But so some folks missed the mark. Um, he also did the research. He looked back into the history of the, the ordinance too. So not bad kid though. Good job. But yeah. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll explore that more. It's always fun to have low riders on down ballot. Yeah. yeah we should definitely it. keep an eye on the low rider story. I'm, I'm, I'm for the low riders. I would go, I'd go hang out. I don't have a low rider myself, but I'd, you know, find out where they're, where they're maybe cruising, take some pictures of some cars. There you go. Share there some go. cannabis with some of the people when they stop, you know, absolutely. Times. Yeah. Yeah, some of these guys they seem very they seem very chill. So, um, well, um, speaking of chill, let's uh let's do one more thing. Is that if that's okay with you? Yep. Um, so Beta Breakers is fucking back. Have you been to Beta Breakers before? When I was a kid. What did you think? I I've never been, so I I, I do not have the experience. I thought it was a, uh, I thought it was a lot uh more running than I expected when I was a kid. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it it definitely involves some sort of movement. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's find out more about uh, it, uh, the return of Beta Breakers um, in the midst of our global pandemic. San Francisco woke up to a party of runners this morning. Ooh. Beta Breakers returned for the first time since 2019. Oh man, what a morning. Cron Forest Camila Barco brings us the sights and sounds from the starting line all the way to the finish. And that's a wrap on the 2022 Beta Breakers race. More than 15,000 people participated in the event and ran through the streets of San Francisco in all forms of clothing. Look good, feel good, run fast. The best dressed race in the Bay Area returned to the streets of San Francisco Sunday morning. <laughs> Avid runners who came out to win started the Beta Breakers race near the Embarcadero. But the competition quickly turned into the one for the best costume. That's some unicorn tights from um, an old Ultimate Frisbee team. Decided to put it all together with uh, a sequined uh, silver cape. The seven and a half mile race also featured Superman, Power Rangers, Waldo, and Baby Yoda. Star Trek was, you know, the. Uh, let the force be with you was just around the corner, so I say, why not? Let's get into this. The race quickly turned into a party at Hades Valley. I think the most exciting part of the race is the Hay Street Hill. And it continued near the Panhandle and ended at Ocean Beach. <laughs> it's just so universe. Any and everyone can participate. You don't have to be a fast runner. You can be a walker. For some, Sunday marked their first time participating in the event. I figured it was a fun way to explore San Francisco. Others, like Clark Semple, have been doing it for 30 plus years. I started in 1973, and this is my 70th birthday. Semple doesn't know when he'll stop running in the Beta Breakers race, but it doesn't seem like it's any time soon. Do, do it till you draw it. In San Francisco, Camila Barco, Cron 4 News. Hell yeah. I'm glad that's back. Absolutely. He seemed like he was taking a little break in the middle too, so that's nice. You can you can sit and just chill and talk to the press and then just keep running. It's a, it's a very laid back race. So Yeah, there's not a lot of people actually like com competing in the race. There's very few right. like competitive runners that it's like a lot of a lot of casual runners and people who aren't really runners who are like, ah, how far could it be? And then yeah. they find out how far it could be and they're like, uh oh. <laughs> Have you um yeah, I've, I've traversed the city before that way, like from coast to coast, um, uh, walking. It took quite a fucking while. Um, we stopped all along the way to have meals, but um, it took the better part of a day just to walk across the city. Um, uh, at, you know, at a, at a steady pace. Definitely not some sort of running pace. Certainly walking. Oh, I ran it when I was, me and my dad ran it when I was a kid. No, oh, the yeah, the beta breakers for yeah. sure. No, the, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking of the the last time I was on shrooms in the city. And we walked across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to bring your city legs. Got to bring your yeah, city absolutely. Legs. It doesn't feel like much when when it's happening, and then you realize, oh shit, the car's on the other side of town. <laughs> you wake up the oh, next day. Get, oh god, you have to get on the bus. Back in the day, this is before Uber and uh, Lyft were available. 
Well, and in San right. Francisco, getting across town on a bus actually is not that big a challenge. So no, not at all. It's actually pretty pretty easy. Um, city was built at a time when public transit was still a thing. So they've they've actually got infrastructure there for public transit. So fabulous. We don't necessarily have that luxury here in the South Bay. Oh well, another fun, fabulous week on down ballot, Producer Dave. I, yep. I feel like I feel like the, I feel like we're we're really hitting our stride. Um, and a uh, Hope that you agree, listener and viewer. Thank you. Thank you for your viewership and your listenership. Please keep sharing with friends because we're only as strong as the network we build. Um, and don't forget to get your vaccinations and wear your mask and try to keep your pants on. Yep. Down ballot can be found on every podcatcher out there. If you happen to find a podcatcher you like and we're not on it, let us know. Make sure you join our Twitch channel, community at Twitch. If you never use Twitch, our community is probably a pretty good place to land. Because the mm-hmm. people in the chat will be nice to you if you don't understand certain things about Twitch. It's twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media. Everybody uh, watching, listening live, uh, hang out. Uh, Chip's going to be hosting Local Love in a little bit. And we have a brand new act. It's called Wiz- Wizards. It features uh, G. Willikers and uh, Phil Ziggs. So I don't know what they have in store for you during Local Love. And um I will either see everybody uh, tomorrow night for the intellectual Dollar Tree, or if uh, after local love winds down and I feel like doing a little bit of the crazy, maybe I'll see everybody for the night twitch. This is uh, Locals, by Audible Smoke Signal. Peace out. <laughs> To get the party started Pick up my phone Just to check and see who's calling Dress up real nice For the ladies at the bar And I'm driving in my car Just to get to where they are Here at the local scene Is where I plant my feet It's where I smoke my cigarette And I hold my drink I look at all my friends They're all blazing greens Here at the front of the stage Waiting for MTV Where are those guys Who's standing next to me With the pipe in his hand Ready to blaze for me About five minutes later We're all singing We now get the fuck up on we like the scene, yeah. We do what we want, and what we want is to jam. So sit back and enjoy the band. We do what we want, and what we want is to jam. So sit back and enjoy the band. Enjoy that band. I turn and head back to the bar for a refill, man. Cause you know where we are We're headed out to the car To smoke another one what? And another one Woo! Now just when the magic starts kicking in I hear we left playing And you know it's time to head in Alright everybody now it's time to grab a new drink Spark it if you got it And then pass it to me yeah. We do what we want And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the band we want what we want to do and what we want is to jam so sit back and enjoy the band enjoy that band last up on the field for the show tonight it's down and dirty in five so we're headed outside to spark up another joint now who's got my light a stoner e of course shouldn't you be inside i'm all up in this bitch being who i gotta be i'm fucked up like the u.s economy the truth is is that i don't Logically, Stoner E take you on a psychedelic odyssey Now inside motherfuckers is rocking me And outside shit we smoke a lot of rockin' Rockin' the rolly, you the sexy girl be jockin' me Ain't too drunk to fuck, but I'll probably do a sloppin' We do what we want What we wanna do And what we want is to jam So sit back and enjoy the band Enjoy the band Enjoy the band Enjoy the band We do what we want and what we want is to jam, so sit back and enjoy the band. Molly say, do he like jamming? Hope he like jamming too. Well, I gotta say, thank you, Bob. We do, yes, I gotta say, thank you, Bob. We do. Well, Bob Molly say, do he like jamming? And he hope he like jamming too. Well, I gotta say, thank you, Bob. We do, yes, I gotta say, thank you, Bob. We do. We want, what we want to do, what we want.
fit back.